Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, my soul. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no more, no rain, no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me that portion of the 80th Psalm on the screen. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Mephim. Stir up your strength and come to help us. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You have cast out it and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea, and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. They burn it with fire like rubbish. At the rebuke of your countenance, let them perish. 
Let your hand be upon the man, your right hand. The Son of Man you have made so strong for yourself, and we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The second reading from Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rehab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of the lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They gathered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all of these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord.
praise to you, Lord Christ. Be pardoned for my sins, prolong thy feeble breath, he healeth thy infirmities, and ransoms thee from death. He bonds thee with his love, upholds thee with his truth, and like the angel he In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. The last three weeks I had titled my sermons, and I don't usually do that. I don't usually title them, but I did. And I titled them Standing in the Need of Prayer, Part 1, 2, and 3. And I thought it was nice. It was a nice, nice title. I liked it. It seemed fitting. But then I read the gospel for today. And I had to change the title to simply... Pray, 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 pray. Listen to this gospel. Praying for peace and then hearing words of conflict. Praying for love and hearing about division. What to say? What do we say when Jesus proclaims that he has come to bring fire to the earth? So I thought about it this week and I thought, well, you know, I think I could say that he's speaking about the Holy Spirit. He's speaking about a baptism of fire by the Holy Spirit, not just by water, but by the Holy Spirit. But I'm not going to do that. Or when Jesus warns of this advent of a new order that's coming to earth that will bring not peace, but chaos. I thought, well, I could say he's speaking about the mission that he's given to his disciples. He's speaking about what he has called them to do, that they are coming to proclaim and preach a new message, and as with anything new, as with any change, there's bound to be conflict and chaos. So I could speak to that, but I'm not going to. What I will speak to is the hardness of these words. When we pray for peace and love, and we come to church and we hear words from Jesus about division and conflict. They are words that are harsh, uncompromising, and very far from this image of a prince of peace. And then the gospel talks about the reality of Jesus' ministry and death, which became a reality for many people who proclaimed the name of Jesus as they endured death and torture. It's hard at times to hear these words. It's very hard. It's a test of faith. So what I can speak to is, so is prayer. Prayer can be hard. Prayer can be a test of faith. Prayer at times could be a leap of faith. It's a risk, and it's not easy. I started this series on prayer four weeks ago. Can you believe it? Four weeks. I started this four weeks ago with a scene from a movie from Mrs. Miniver. Sorry about that town in England where a Miniver family lived at right at the beginning of World War II. So I want to end with a scene from the same movie. This little town in England and the Miniver family are now really a part of the war. By the end of the movie, they are in it and they are a part of the war. And everybody gathers in church on Sunday. Just like when they gathered for tea, they had tea in the bomb shelter. Every Sunday, they still gather for church, and they wear their Sunday best. But by now, you could see that there are empty spaces in the pews. People that have fell victim to the war, people that have gone to serve. But the priest still processes in with the choir in front of him. But the other thing that you could see is that the building has been destroyed. It's only a shell of what it was. And the priest goes to walk up the stairs of the pulpit, and they have been, they're gone. They're just a couple of steps that somebody has nailed together with some wood. But he walks, and he gets to the steps, and he goes into the pulpit, and he invites this congregation to pray. And there is such a strength in his voice. 
There is such an amazing witness and strength to all of those who have gathered to worship in a church that's been bombed out. More than half of it is gone, but everybody is there in church praying. And it's that time of prayer when everybody is gathered, gathered and drawn together. It's when we're drawn together. And then what we know about prayer, to trust in prayer, to take a leap of faith with prayer, to pray for what we need right now, knowing all of that helps us to begin to understand what these words are when Jesus speaks about division, conflict, and chaos. And that is this, that there is nothing that we are ever asked to do in the name of God that Jesus hasn't already done. There is not a pain that we are asked to endure that Jesus hasn't endured. There's not a grief that we experience that Jesus first hasn't experienced. And there is not a prayer that we say that Jesus hasn't first said. No matter how much we talk about prayer, the why about prayer, why we pray, or what we should do, uh, when we're praying, who we should pray for, nothing is as important as the actual action of praying. Like that small community that got together, nothing is more important than that, the act of prayer. Because every act of prayer, no matter how small, every act of prayer is slowly beginning to build the kingdom of God. Have you ever gone into a store and seen Legos? The little Lego puzzle pieces? They're everywhere. Kids love them. Legos. There's a Lego land. There's a Lego hotel. And I'm sure somewhere there's a Lego world being sought. You know, somebody's thinking about a Lego world. What's amazing about little Legos is you take one piece, two pieces, and when you put them together, they create amazing things. If you can just see them, one little piece, two little pieces, these little blocks, any color, any size, you put them together, pink, hot pink, <laughs> yellow, blue, green, you put them together, and they build upon each other, and they make the most amazing creations. And so it is with prayer. A little prayer here and a little prayer there. And slowly, more and more, we are building upon and helping to lay the foundation of the kingdom of God. The act of prayer, whatever we say, whatever we do, nothing is more important than the prayer and praying even if it's a little Lego of prayer. That's all we're asked to do. There is no perfect posture. There's no perfect prayer. The only perfection we strive to get is to do what Jesus came to do. And our words have already been spoken by Christ. Christ has prayed the way ahead of us because the words were placed in his heart because he was the first person to pray our Father to his Father in heaven. So for now, I leave you with this. Pray without ceasing. Pray with your voice. Pray with your heart. Pray with your soul. Pray with words. And if you can't find words, pray in silence. There is no special place. There are no special perfect prayers. For God in heaven, our God in heaven, has already placed the prayers in our heart. So I offer a prayer today a prayer by simply saying as I went down to the river to pray studying about that good old way and who shall wear the starry crown good Lord show me the way Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. 
As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who will wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down, let's go down, don't you want to go down? Come on, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please pray with me our prayer for growth. Gracious God, we ask that you increase our love of you and deepen our faith in you so that we may be your faithful witnesses 
in this corner of your creation. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, our bishop, Ray, Susie, and for all of our retired clergy. And we pray also for St. Clements, St. Thomas, St. David's, St. Dustin's, St. Elizabeth's, St. Francis, Day Spring Conference Center, Parish, and St. Thomas Chapel. We pray for Barack, our president, Rick, our governor, Randall, our mayor, and the Lee County commissioners. We offer our thanksgivings for the many blessings of this day, for our guests and those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We pray for Christians, Muslims, and Jews, and all people of faith throughout the world who are suffering persecution for their beliefs. We pray for all who work for peace, especially those who give their lives that it may grow. We pray for all victims of terrorism and violence. We pray for those who are committed to our daily prayers and listed in the weekly bulletin. And we also pray for Sarah, Karen, Mary, Jonathan, Stephen, Laura, Deb, Tom, Evelyn, Marilyn, David, Michael, Richard, Andrew, Celia, Tracy, Jeffrey, Ryan, Liz, Lennis, Bill, Ellie, Marsha, Daniela, Evelyn, Bill, Roz, Marianne, Susan, Chris, Luba, and Thomas. In our congregation, we pray for the Marrero family, the Marstella family, the Martins family, the Maruzzi family, the Mayberry family, and the McCaleb family. Are there others for whom we should pray and blessings for which we give thanks? Let us confess our sins to God.
God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. If you could just be seated for one minute. I'd like to invite uh, those that are volunteering with our after school program to come forward. I actually have a list here of names, so I could call you by name, or you could just come forward. <laughs> our after school program, this is a new venture for us. We've uh, never done anything like this before, and we're starting uh, uh, next Monday with our after school program. We'll have children coming here every afternoon, Monday through Friday. And uh, we also welcome a lot of our volunteers from other parishes who are here too. And we welcome you to our service today. So happy that you're here. And, uh, and we just wanted to bless all of our volunteers and bless the venture because this is the week where everything has to be done and ready. And also, are there some bus drivers here? You could stand up front. You get best extra blessings if there's bus drivers here. <laughs> We've got some volunteer bus drivers too, so. It's a, it's a new ministry and a wonderful ministry, and we thank them. We thank all of you for what you'll be doing and for the time that you'll give and for the children. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you sent your own son into this world. We thank you for all the lives of all of our children that you entrust to our care. Help us to remember that we are all your children, that we may love and nurture them, and that we may help them to attain full stature, the stature that's intended for them in your eternal kingdom, for the sake of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We bless this ministry in the name of our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And thank you. <laughs> and now, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you.
Oh Lord, you fed the multitudes by the lakeside by blessing the gifts of a few people. Bless these gifts to the feeding of the needy and bless us in your service, for we ask it in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only son born of a woman to fulfill your law to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship, from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. This is the Lord's Supper. God's feast for all of God's people. There is always an abundance here, and there is a place for you. You are invited and encouraged to feast at God's table.
And now in joyful thanksgiving for all the gifts we have received, let us pray together saying, God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. As you have been fed at this table, go to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go to set free the imprisoned. As you have received, give. As you have heard, proclaim. And the blessing which you have received from Creator, Son, and Spirit go with you. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. 